Hey everyone, it's Michelle here with another video for the alleyway stamps. Today we're going to be doing a fun watercolor technique using distress inks. I pulled out this stamp called Petal Pushers which has a bunch of flower stamps and you can see that I've already laid a bunch of them on the bottom. I'm using pretty much all of the flowers except for the big one. Um, because I just want to have enough space to have a lot of them. So I just positioned them and then I'm mounting them onto my acrylic block. And I just had this card base as a template. So I'm just going to pull out a different piece of paper. And I'm pulling out a watercolor piece of paper right now. Um, so I am prepping this watercolor piece of cardstock, which is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half with some anti static powder because we're going to be doing some white heat embossing. So I'm just inking up my stamps with Versamark ink, and then we're going to put white embossing powder on top of this. So I just have my embossing powder in a little Tupperware container, and I have it handy um, throughout this whole process because I'm going to be going back and forth between stamping and um, putting powder on so having this powder in this container really makes this process easy so that you don't have to keep cleaning up afterwards and it just keeps it really contained. So it's kind of hard to see on camera but the stamp set comes with a tiny little um, line that you can use as a stem for the flower so I'm just stamping those on a few of those flowers. And part of the reason that I put on the powder instead of stamping everything at once is so that you can see it. So you can't really see it on camera, but in real life you can see where the powder sticks to the Versamark ink after each step of stamping. So I stamped a bunch of the flowers and then unmounted them and I'm just filling in some more spaces with flowers so that I have pretty much like two of each kind of flower on here. So I'm stamping all of these separately and then adding powder to that again. and here when I tilt it in the light is where you can kind of see where the flowers are a lot better. Um, so when you're actually doing this in person, it's pretty easy to see if you put powder in between each step. So I think that's all the flowers I'm going to do for this. I just really want to keep it to the bottom of the photo so it kind of looks like a little landscape. But I also have a sentiment that I've created that says thanks and I've spelled it out using these alphabet soup um, stamps from the alleyway stamps. And I'm doing a thank you card for my friend who is actually plant sitting for me while I'm away on vacation. So I thought that having all of these flowers was really appropriate. So I just kind of mounted them a little wonky so that it would be a really fun, playful kind of look. So you'll see later they're like kind of crooked, but that's kind of the look I was going for. And then I also pulled out this border stamp that comes in the same flower stamp set. And I'm just stamping that at the top also with Versamark. And all of this is going to be heat embossed in white. So now here in the camera again, you can kind of see the design. So I'm just going to clean up really quickly. Um, what I do is I kind of run over my area with a lint roller. That's what I do a lot after um, working with embossing powder because even though I have it over the container, sometimes it gets a little messy and I find that this is a great way to just clean up all of those little particles. So I've gone ahead off camera and heat set my embossing so you can see it's a little shiny there and you can't really see it because it's white on white but now we're going to be doing a really cool watercolor technique which is going to um, make this white embossing really stick out. So I pulled out a sheet of wax paper. Um, you really just need anything with a slick surface so I know a lot of people use craft mats when they're doing um, messy techniques like this but I find wax paper works just as fine. You can also use like a sheet protector, anything really that's just slick and won't absorb ink. And I'm pulling out my mini distress ink cubes. Um, I find the mini ink cubes are great to use for this technique because as you can see it only puts a small area down. You can really get into like all of the little crevices that you're that don't have any ink yet. So I'm just putting down different colors. I'm going for kind of like a sky soft background so I'm doing like blues and purples but I also put in some yellow there because I thought it would give a nice um, brightness to this. I'm just putting my piece of paper over to make sure I have enough ink to cover the entire area. And I'm going to pull out my little mister. This just has plain water in it. If you want to go for a really shiny look, you can put some perfect pearls in your water. Um, but today I just wanted to go with simple plain water. So you can just see I'm just misting a lot of water on top of this. Um, basically until you see that the ink starts to beat up into those um, little balls of water. And then I'm going to place my paper down, embossing side down. 
and kind of just like smush all of the ink around. You can see it kind of like squeezes out of the edges and that's kind of what you want to see to know that it's um, all of the ink is mixing well. So this is kind of what it looks like at the end. You can still see it's still very soft, um, but I'm going to go ahead and dry this with my heat gun just to speed up the process. And we're going to dip this back into the ink that I've left. I haven't cleaned that up because I know I want to um, kind of like pounce my paper back into those little droplets to create more depth. Um, so I pounced into those big pools of blue, but they turned a little dark because of the mixing. So I decided I wanted to put down some more fresh blue col color. So I took my blue um, ink pad, which is Salty Ocean, by the way. You can use whatever colors you have on hand, really. Um, but I really like this bright blue color. So I just went ahead and put a little bit more on my wax paper where there's a bit of empty space. Added water to that again, I'm and I'm just aiming my watercolor piece so that I can get it right over the sentiment. I really want there to be the darkest because the darker um, color ink you have, the easier it is to see the sentiment um, because there's more contrast against the white. So I just put enough until I thought it was um, good enough to see. And I'm just going to leave that wet for now and let it dry and finish off the flowers on the bottom. So I kind of want to make them brighter since everything is pretty pastel and I want these flowers to be um, more fun and colorful. So I'm just taking my distress markers and coloring in these areas. I'm doing this really fast. It really did not take any time at all. And I'm not being perfect with this because once you add water, it'll just blend all of the color um, really easily. And you can see I'm really not even taking care to like wash my um, brush in between each color. This is a water brush by the way. Usually I just wipe it off in between colors but I feel that with this technique it doesn't matter so much because you're already going on top of previously watercolored um, pieces so blending of color is not really an issue. And because the white heat embossing resists the color it's really easy to just stay in the lines and you can go really quick with this. And another little tip, if you have ink on top of the white heat embossing and you can't wipe it off, you can just add a little bit more water to that white heat embossing and then um, once it reactivates the ink, you can soak it up with a dry cloth or baby wipe. So I just went ahead and heat set the rest of that uh, blue ink that was still wet. And once that was done, I adhered it to a white card base and that finished off the card. Here are some close-up photos. This is a super fun technique to try um, with these distress inks to create a watercolor background. And I really love the look of when you kind of like put the dry watercolor piece back into those droplets and it creates more layers of watercolor. I think that's really cool. And it's just really interesting to have different layers of watercolor with the flowers on top um, being like a brighter kind of watercolor and then the background being pastel. So I really enjoyed making this card and I hope you enjoyed watching it too. On screen here, I have some other videos that I've done that have more watercolor techniques. Some of these are with Distress Ink, some of them are with Gelato, so you can just check them out and um, really explore with some fun painting. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and the Alleyway Stamps, and I hope to see you again soon.